Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about Power Automate for Desktop machine management capability. Now in the last four videos, we talked about how we can go ahead and get all your desktop set up using the Power Automate for Desktop and building those attended flows. Now the good thing is all of those attended flows, you know, the ones which allow human interaction, uh, those can be transferred over into unattended flows. Unattended means no human interaction is needed. The flows will run by itself when you've officially signed up from your machine. But there is some work that is needed to configure your machine. There is also a software that is installed. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on all of that. We'll walk through the entire process needed for you to go ahead and set up your machine or machines to do the unattended flow. So stick around, there's a lot to cover. But first, here's my intro video. So I wanna start by doing a quick recap of the specific slide that I showed you in the very first video. And as you see inside that box, it says that the desktop, which is a power automate for desktop software, it runs on the UI flow service, but it also has the built-in on-premises gateway. And this was almost like the second iteration of this version that came out for the power automate for desktop, because it's important not just for the attended flows, also for the unattended, that you absolutely need that on-premises gateway built into the software for the unattended service also to run. So just thought I'll give you a quick recap on this. Now let's go and focus on the installation and the configuration. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and either install or update the existing Power Automate for desktop. And my personal recommendation is that always go ahead and keep your application, which is the Power Automate for desktop, up to date. Get the latest version of it. Another tip that I'll share with you is that go ahead and get the actual exe file from this website whose link I've put in the description below. Um, don't use the built-in one for Windows 11. Um, also, don't use the App Store that is built directly into your operating system. Go to this website, download the full version of the exe file and install that. That's my personal recommendation. So when you come to this website, you see this option in the install Power Automate for using the MS installer. When you go over here, you see it says download the Power Automate for installer. And then the option number two is it tells you what that file is. It is an exe file. That's the important one. And then once you go and get it, you'll actually get this information. When you install, when you download it, it's also important to know which version you have. So you see most of these files are over 250 megs. That's a lot of information. But the key thing is that when you go to the file, you right click on it, go to properties. In the properties, you go to details. This is where it will tell you what the version is. So you can always go and check what you have and then you can double check to see, okay, the one I'm gonna install, is this a newer version? So that's how you do the version comparison. So now when you go ahead and have this you know, exe file, I'll go ahead and click on it and it will start the installation process. See, it also gives you a good spot checking over here. Hey, this is the existing version and this is the new version that you're installing. It doesn't tell you, hey, both are the same. It just gives it to you at your discretion. Obviously to our even untrained eye, we can even see, hey, these are the same versions. I'm good with what I have. All right, so let's get back on track. Now when I click on next, you will see all of these options over here at his displays. And this is the one that we need, the second checkbox. It says install the machine runtime app to connect to Power Automate Cloud Portals. This is how we will have to give you the flexibility also to run those unattended flows, something I'll show you in the end. So if everything else looks good, even if your location looks good, this is where you start the installation. And after, obviously you've got to go ahead and you know, select this checkbox, which is for selecting the install with the agreement, terms of service, all of that good. Now I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna do that. Key, key takeaway from this section is that you will need the install machine runtime app to connect to the Power Automate port Cloud Portal. All right, so you get that. Now let's go and take a look at how this whole configuration works. In the search, I'm gonna start typing in the Power Automate. In fact, right at the Power Space Automate, you see two things. You see the best bet, which is the Power Automate for desktop, but now you will also see the Power Automate machine runtime. So this is what we need to now configure. So I'll go and click on it and a separate message will open up and I was gonna ask you to sign in. Now this is where you sign in with your Office 365 or your Azure authentication because there are situations where the sign in for your local machine will be different from what you go ahead and sign in to the actual cloud. So in this case, keep in mind, it's the cloud authentication that you need to do. All right, so I went and put in my username, click on sign in. It'll go and pop up this authentication section. I'll go ahead and click on the exact one which I have. 
I need to go and put in a password, something that you may also have to do. So let me finish that. The password is typed in, click on sign in. In my case, I have a multi-factor authentication, so I'm gonna go and complete that. And now we've officially signed in and it's getting things ready. It's basically going and getting my machine ready. So we are in here, everything looks good. The fact that we signed in successfully means we are now talking to the cloud directly. And over here now, I need to go ahead and select the environment I want to reuse to run on my machine. Now, if you remember for all the other videos, I have a very specific environment. In fact, I've gone ahead and named that as a Power Automate RPA pad. So I'm going to select that. Now it is actually going and talking to that environment. It is making sure that, hey, everything is good on that side. It went and did the configuration. And now it's also making sure that all the connection is good. This is a very important step that you need to complete is basically going and making sure all your settings is good on the local machine. And as you can see, it talked successfully to the cloud because it immediately recognized a few things. If you remember, I go ahead and use the pay as you go Azure, Azure subscription tied to this environment, it immediately picked that up. It now also tells me that, hey, you are connected with Power Automate as this machine. So it went and actually got my machine name. See, under machine details, it went and got this machine name. So now this is going ahead and actually set up. So the configuration piece is done, but I wanna go ahead and do a verification. And for that, it's neat because it says view machine in portal. So I'll go and click on that. And it opened up the browser and now it is authenticating directly inside Power Automate. Now in my case, I had already signed in, so it's not asking me for another authentication. But it's important things. We are, we are in Power Automate, we are under the monitor, and in monitor, there's a section for machines. And it told me that, hey, this is the very specific one, the Power Tower. You see the one that we had the name over here, Power Tower? That's the one that it directly opened up. Oops. It opened up, it's telling me it's connected, there's no flows, anything running. It is even telling me what is the version name of the Power Automate for desktop that I have, when it was created, nothing in use right now. But if I go one tab to the left, it even gives me the names of all my machines. And I just wanna to touch this slightly because in one of the future videos, I am going to touch on this topic of machine groups and other things. Um, I'm not gonna do that now, but at least I wanna kind of mention that, that this is where you go and see all the activity. And it's a very important place because right now it gives me a quick snapshot of what are all the machines I have Power Automate for desktop, uh, what are the versions over there, are any of them even connected? So the new one that I have, Power Automate desktop, that's actually connected, its status is active. The other one is disconnected. So it really helps from that planning standpoint, but this is the important thing because we've got the installation done, we've got the configuration done, we take a look at how the configuration properties show up, but now I wanna show you the final thing is how you go ahead and use all of this to build your first unattended flow. So first things first is I just wanna show you what that flow is all about. So when I go ahead and I click on my search and I just type in Power Automate, I have to now go ahead and fire up the Power Automate for desktop application. So I'll go ahead and click on that, the application will get things ready. We just gotta go ahead and actually see that flow. So I'm in my correct environment, I've got the subscription all good, in my flow, this is the one that I want to run, is that get updates on multiple tracking numbers. This is the flow that I want to run in an unattended fashion. And how do I do that? For that, I have to go and build a cloud flow that I can either manually trigger or I can schedule it. So we now go back to our Power Automate on the website. I'm going to go in um, on my flows. I'll click on a new flow. And this time I'm going to do it through the instant cloud flow with manually triggering it. Triggering it. Click on create and I'll just type in live demo to create Power Automate desktop unattended flow. All right, so now I'm gonna click on the plus new step. The first one, which is for the initial trigger, I'll leave it as is. Now I already see desktop flows. If you don't search for desktop, all right, don't search for Power Automate or anything, just search for desktop and you will immediately see the desktop flows. So I'm gonna click on the desktop flows and now it is going to give me two actions. You select the first one because we are using the Power Automate for desktop. Once I select that, now it gives me the initial place to make the connection. Now, if this is the one place you can make the connection, you can also go and create the connections and the connectors. Both of them are fine. I'm gonna be right over here. First option for connect is directly to machine, which is what we want. So I'm gonna leave that as is. And then machine or machine group, well, when I cl clicked on the dropdown, it automatically recognized the two machines that I have registered in this environment. And that's perfect because that just shows that all the configuration we've done so far is good. So I'll stick with the power tower because that's the one that I'm in. Now you go ahead and set up the username uh, or the domain and username and the password. This is the exact same one that we went to use to sign in on the desktop application, all right? So remember, it has to be consistent. So let me go and type my stuff in. Password is in. Let me go and click on create. It says creating. 
And now we are back to that same step. And over here, I've gone ahead and selected the get updates or multiple tracker. It automatically selected because it was the first one. But this is the important thing. If all your username and password is in, it is successful, you will be able to come in directly over here. Otherwise, you'll keep getting these errors on the top. All right, so my run mode, now this is going to be the two ones. It was it gives me the attended and the unattended. The important, important thing about attendance is that where you are signed in because it was your account that was used. Remember that or whatever account that was used to sign in, that was the one that you're gonna use. So now I'll go and sit, select that option for the attended and we're actually done and it's literally that simple. Done. We'll basically click on save and we are completed over here. The beautiful thing about this is you could trigger this flow directly from your mobile phone because this manually trigger actually looks like a, a virtual button directly from your phone app and you can trigger that in. Keep in mind though is that this desktop now, it needs to be signed in with that account that we use to go ahead and authenticate in and then it will go ahead and trigger the flow and do everything in automatically. All you need to make sure is that you've got basically this software and you've also got this software running in the back end. Also, you can always come back to the monitor section and in the monitor section, you can see your desktop flow runs. So I'll go ahead and click on OK because I've already done that. And right over here are some examples of how my desktop flows have run. It tells me what the flow name is. It tells me how I'm successful. It tells me how I did it. It was basically in an unattended or was it in an attended fashion? If it was attended, where the machine was. If it was unattended, again, where the machine was. It's giving me all of this information directly from this right here in the desktop flow runs under monitor. And finally, when you're testing this, that means that you've signed out of your Windows operating system and the Power Automate desktop unattended flow is running, you will get this message in your sign-in window that, hey, a remote session is active. That remote session is actually your desktop flow that is running. It's actually pretty neat. So as a quick recap, the first thing we had to do was go ahead and download a fresh copy of the Power Automate for desktop and just make sure that it's not a newer version. In that, select that checkbox for the Automate machine runtime. Once it's installed, you wanna go into that machine runtime, sign in and register your machine. Once it's registered, go into the Power Automate website and make sure that you actually see that machine over there. After that, you could potentially take any of your existing attended flows, tweak it a little bit and trigger them using a cloud flow by the technique that I just showed you. And the interesting thing is that once you've signed out and the flow is running, it'll tell you that actually, hey, something is going on on your machine. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. And as always, keep using Power Automate Desktop. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.